Hey folks, it's Vlad from Shiny Life. Long time no see. I guess it's been quite a while since I made one of these tutorial videos, but I wanted to stop by and let you all know what I found out about using the new ZBrush 4 with Sculpty Maker. Uh, ZBrush 4 is awesome, but there's a couple of quirks, and the one is especially annoying. There's a there's a problem with the UV maps on the ZBrush sculpted on the ZBrush primitives that's interfering with the texturing process. Um, so I thought I just wanted to stop by and show you kind of a workaround that uh, I've worked out with the help of Nancy Ann at the ZBrush user forums. Uh, and it allows you to pretty much just uh, create sculpties as we have been with ZBrush 3.5. So let's just uh, load up ZBrush and get started. All right, so here we are. We got our new copy of ZBrush 4. All excited. Want to check out some of the new tools. I especially wanted to check out the uh, Spotlight Texturing tool. So I started out with something that I might use for a sculpting in Second Life. So yeah, I sculpted a flower or something and textured it, trying out some of the new tools, especially like the, uh, what is it, Move Elastic Brush, which really lets you squish that mesh around without disturbing the uh, even spread of the faces. I really love that brush. It's perfect for what we need on Sculpties to be able to move stuff around. And the texturing tool is awesome. So I exported the uh, Z-Sculpty and that seemed to work just fine. I got my sculpt map just fine. I was surprised it actually worked. I didn't expect it to. It wasn't designed for ZBrush 4, let alone 3.5, you know. <laughs> so I was glad that that worked. But then I went to grab my texture from PolyPaint. This is a PolyPaint texture on about a million polygons. And I was like, oh, don't, <laughs> there's no texture, it wouldn't, I tried several different prims, I tried uh, different techniques to grab that texture, but it just wouldn't grab that polypaint texture, so I started searching around on the web, I looked on the ZBrush forums, and luckily other people were having the same problem, people who understand the problem better than I do, like uh, Nancy Ann, who came up with a workaround that involves using Modo to reduce the size of the UV maps. Apparently there's some problem with the UV maps overlapping on the default ZBrush primitives and ZBrush 4 and that's causing problems when you try to grab from polypaint. So she has this workaround that involves resizing that UV map so that it doesn't confused the poly paint grabbing. Unfortunately that UV map fix doesn't work with the Z Sculpty exporter. <laughs> um, but I've worked out a way kind of a workflow that you can use so that you can have both UV maps available both the one that works with the Z, the X, the Z Sculpty exporter and the one that works for poly paint texture grabbing and you can just kind of switch back and forth between them as needed. So let me go ahead and show you 
Nancy Ann's fix in Moto, and then I'll show you the kind of file I've set up or the workflow I've got to switch between the two UV maps. Okay, so let me show you that workaround that Nancy Ann shared with us. We'll use a good old 32 by 33 sphere with the poly mesh and this default UV. Now remember this UV that we have right here is properly set up and will work with Zsculpty and Sculpty Maker. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get this object and save it. I'm gonna call it UV Sculpt Export. That'll help me keep track of what's going on. I'm gonna clone this object under the Tools menu. I'm gonna rename this one to UV Texture. Because when we fix this one, this is gonna be the one that's set up properly for grabbing the texture from the poly paint colors. And I'm gonna send this object over to go using GoZ over to Moto. I'm sure this resizing of the UV could be done in other programs, but this is the one that Nancy Ann used to describe it, and uh, I happen to have Moto, so it worked out great for me. Go over here to the UV map, make sure it's all selected. And we're going to fit all the UVs within the object. Uncheck this Keep Proportion button. And then after you use Fit UVs, you go here to the Scale. I'll set this proportional thing. And then 99.93 is the magic number she discovered that resizes that UV so that it matches the object properly. Now I'm not sure how exact that is for any kind of builders who need exact perfect alignment, but for me it's working pretty well. Uh, we can see that uh, now I transferred that object back into ZBrush and you can see that it's changed the object because it changed the uh, file name or the object name, which is kind of handy because you can't really tell visually that the UV map has changed. But now this UV map that's on here now will allow us to grab the texture properly. So what I do after that usually is I clone that and then I call this one Sculpt or... Okay, so we have our three objects now. We have the Sculpt Me object that we're actually going to sculpt on and texture on and use. Then we have these other two that we made. The original Export Sculpt UV which we're going to use a UV map from this one when we want to export the shape. And we have the UV texture. We're going to use the UV map from this object when we want to grab a texture map from the poly paint colors. Let me just sculpt something real quick to show you what I mean. All right, so now we've got something sculpted and we're ready to see what it looks like in Second Life. So to export the sculpt map, what we're gonna do is come up here to the tool palette, select the UV export sculpt object. We're gonna go up here to the Z plugin, move this over. So 
it's easier to get at as you plug in an UV master down here there's copy UV so we're going to copy the UVs from that object we're going to highlight the sculpt you want and then we're going to paste the UVs onto that sculpt doesn't look any different but now we can go ahead and come down to Z Sculpty export that here's our sculpt maps right here now to grab the texture we'll go back up to the higher subdivision We'll highlight the UV texture object, copy its UVs with the UV master plugin, go back to your sculpt, paste those UVs, and now we can do a new from poly paint, and we'll get. Uh, our good texture map that's ready to export by cloning go over to texture hit export and now we can combine those two in second life and uh, let's go see what it looks like Okay, so that's a good workaround, at least for now. Hopefully, Pixel Logic will fix this problem for the people that are having it. It seems like it should be pretty easy. They could just go back to the way the UVs were before. Um, but anyway, to save all that rigmarole of doing the several copies and fixing the UV map every time, I've made some files using ZBrush's new project files, which actually saves all your individual tools and subtools and textures separate as a as most doc, as most programs would call a document <laughs> but I have some projects saved that I'll put uh, in a link on my shiny life post that you can download and then when you're when you want to sculpt you can just uh, say load up a sphere 3233 and it's all ready to sculpt on uh, and it has the UV for the export sculpt and the UV for the texture all ready to go. So that should hold us over until something better comes along. Alright, so there's a workaround for that UV problem and a short introduction to using Sculpty Maker with ZBrush 4. Um, keep an eye on Shiny Life for more info like this. I'm going to be delving deeper into ZBrush and most likely make it some new tutorials link into any information like this uh, especially about this problem I'm hoping that PixLogic can fix it or there's some other fix it's kind of annoying not to be able to use all the initialized settings and just get to work right away on a fresh prim but feel free also to leave go to Shine Life leave in the comments there any information or experience or tips you have about ZBrush 4 or anything you'd like to see in any upcoming videos so thanks for watching hope it helps and uh, see you later